Hi, welcome back to my channel. And for today's video, we will be talking on the complex analysis series for the basic introductions of functions of a complex variable. Thank you so much for all your support and if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be updated on a lot of videos that I'll be uploading soon. And um, uh, just want you to know that we are now on a complex analysis series. So this is actually um, the basic introduction for the functions of complex variable. So this requires basic knowledge about the basic analysis and some uh, rigorous set theory. But if you have any questions, I'll be more than willing to assist you with that. Okay, so let's start now. So what does it mean on um, the functions of a complex variable? Even that you have a set S, um, this, is, this S is a set of complex numbers, and um, a function F defined on S is a rule that assigns to each Z, which is a complex number, to a complex number w so in this case this is a function and the number w is called the value of f at z and is denoted by uh, this symbol so that means w is equal to f of z and the set s is called the domain of definition of s so let's consider this for example okay so example if f is defined um on the set at which z is not zero so by means of the equation one over z so then f may be referred to us as the function w equals one over z or simply one over z that's it so how do we describe the domain or the definition on a given complex variable uh, function so let's say um our f of z, um, this is uh, e equal to 1 over z squared plus 1. So how do we define the domain of the definition for f? So, so observe that this thing here is not defined when um, this is equal to 0. Okay, so what? how do we do that? We need to um, equate this to zero and we will avoid such value that makes this something equal to zero so how can we achieve this equation so this is achieved when z is equal to a plus or minus i so therefore our domain of definition here is um the set s except the set containing plus or minus i or simply we just have to say z is not equal to plus or minus i that's it now um suppose that uh let's say um w um u plus i v so that means your u and v are any real numbers then um suppose that w is the value of the function f at um z equals let's say this is x plus i y um, so that uh, u plus iv is equal to f of x plus iy as defined earlier. So what does it mean? So meaning, meaning to say that each real value u and b, this depends on the real value x and y. That means um, f of z can be expressed, this thing here can be expressed in terms of the pair of real valued functions of the real variables x and y. So meaning to say, let's say um, this is our f of z. So our f of z is equal to u of xy plus iv xy. So let me... Uh, label this as equation one because we're gonna need this later now um suppose for example we will use uh polar coordinates so if uh polar coordinates um let's say our um notation for color polar coordinates is r for the radius and theta for the angle instead of um x and y then um 
u plus iv, that's our w, that is f of r e to the i theta. So, we've shown this on a previous video um, about the e to the i theta. What is that all about? So, you might want to check on this thumbnail here. So, to make sure, I'm going to label this where w is equal to u plus iv and our z that's r e to the i theta we will write um f of z equals u of r theta plus i v r theta so i'm gonna label this as equation two so what does it imply this equation one and equation two if in the event that our v here is zero this would simply tell us that our f the function f is a real valued function meaning to say that um let's say this thing here is zero so this will be eliminated and this one will be eliminated so you left with this here and this here so you don't have any imaginary number i on this and in this so this simply tells us that the f here are real valued functions so let's consider for example um let's say our f of z equals z squared then um what happened so if suppose our z is uh, let's say z is x plus i y so what happened is then f of x plus i y that's gonna be um x plus i y squared as defined on this function so this is equivalent to x squared minus y squared plus i to y okay so this simply tells us that um, our u of x y in this case is x squared minus y squared and our v of x y is oh it should be x there should be x so that's 2 x y and also, um, if we're interested for the polar coordinate forms, then um, that's f of um, r e i theta. So that means we assume, assume that our z is r e i theta. Then um, that's equivalent to r e i theta squared. And that's um, r squared e to the i to theta. And um, you might want to check on the thumbnail here for the previous video about how do we convert this e to the i theta into a trigonometric form. So that's equivalent to r squared cosine 2 theta plus i r squared sine 2 theta. The, hence, our u of r theta, that's equivalent to um, r squared cosine 2 theta and our um, v of r theta that's r squared of sine 2 theta that's it so let's consider another example um this example that's f of z equals um the square of the modulo of z um that is equivalent to x squared plus y squared and uh we can just write this with i zero this is actually a real valued function that is commonly used in complex analysis series so you might be expecting a lot of things like this on our complex analysis videos um moving forward but um this is a common comp um real valued functions other complex variable so um what happened if n is zero or a positive integer and um if uh a0 a1 up to a n are complex constants and um your a n of course is not zero the form p of z equals a0 plus a1 z plus up until a n z to the n so we call this as polynomial so this is now our complex polynomial of degree n so this is our new definition for the po complex polynomial so note that the sum has a finite number of terms 
and um that and that the domain of definition is the entire z plane and uh we may add um a definition here that um the quotients of polynomials p of z q of z oh, um we call this as rational complex functions so these uh, rational complex functions of course is defined only when q of z is not zero another example that would lead to an, uh, to an additional definition is that let's say um let z denote any non-zero complex number um, z to the one half observe that has two values that's uh, z to the one half that's equal to plus or minus square root of r exponent i theta over 2. So we've shown these on a previous video, so you might want to check on that, um, where your r is equal to the modulo of z. And um, your theta, um, your theta is limited from negative pi. Um, this is this should be less than theta, less than or equal to pi. So your theta here is the principal value of arg of z. So that's arg of z. So in the event that we only choose the value, um, just one positive value uh, for this one here. So let's say our f of z, uh, we only consider that as r um this one exponent i theta over 2 then we call this a single valued function and um this is of course well defined on a set at which um our z z, z that means the z plane so those elements do, 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 do not have zero value So that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. So if you have any questions or clarification, you can comment down there. So for this video, we only provide a basic introduction to functions of a complex variable. We will continue on this topic on our um, succeeding video. So keep watching and keep updated. Have a great day.